Hello everyone, I'm Margarita Flores and I'm here in Manila, actually in the heart of Quezon City. And we're here to try two restaurants that have been included in the Essence of Asian list of restaurants. You guys really kind of knocked it out of the park with this one. I'm here outside our first Essence of Asia restaurant called Earth Kitchen. From what I know, this restaurant celebrates organic produce from the Philippines, done by three very creative young chefs, and I'm truly looking forward to seeing what they do. So come and join me. Hi. Hi, Chef. Welcome to Earth Kitchen. My name is JR. I'm one of the chefs. Uh, we opened about seven, almost eight years now, Chef. Uh, it started with an idea from Melissa Young. She founded the Gotthard Foundation, whose advocacy is actually to help uh, indigenous peoples uh, collect their products or make products out of the stuff that wow. they have there. And then her mind traveled toward the restaurant. At the same time, so her classmate in AIM, Joseph Hizon, is the general manager of Hizon's Catering. She approached him with the idea of opening a restaurant. Oh, that's really nice. I mean, I'm excited to see what you guys are doing. It's quite a mix of, of different, different dishes from all around the world. Uh, but we try to use as much of the products that are available to us as possible locally. Oh, that's nice. I want to see what they are. Anyway, uh, we'll have Chef David show you around the oh, okay. Hi, Chef. I'm David. Nice to um, meet I'm you. I'm one of the partners of Earth Kitchen. I would like to give you a tour of our restaurant. That's going to be really nice. I'm liking all these really nice paintings in your on the wall. Yes, they're painting from kids from Marawi. Oh. Um, they're for sale and all the proceeds go back to the kids. Wow, that's really interesting that you highlight things from all over the Philippines and real interests that make the community better. Yes, um, we love helping the community. That's great. Over here we have our Got Heart Shop. Um, all the wow. products are locally made. You have such interesting ingredients on your shelves. I'm sure that if you highlight them um, on your menu, that means that your menu is like always ever-changing, no? Uh, yes, we try to include them in our menu and hopefully bring awareness to what they have to other people and for them to patronize those products. See, well, that's what's going to give your, your restaurant a lot of like goodwill and, and nice energy because not, you're not just feeding your guests, but you're also helping the community, which is the way to go. I'm Chef Elgin. Nice uh, to meet you. This uh, looks wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to introduce you to the dishes that we're going to give you. Yes. So we have our watermelon rocket salad. It's uh, local watermelon, yellow and red, with arugula and romaine lettuce. Also has uh, green pea, candied pili nuts. I see the pili, yeah. And some cheese, Local no? white cheese, yeah. Yeah. It's made in house. Great. We it's also have our uh, soft tacos, fish tacos. Okay. Yeah, it's mahi mahi. Oh, nice. Romaine lettuce and uh, kimi nori. It's oh, nice. Yeah. So we also have our sesame sauce and garlic sauce. Okay. Maybe. The pasta is earth kitchen ravioli. Nice. It's homemade also. So we also uh, have the cheese inside and it has garlic and kamote tops. See, nice, huh? Sweet potato tops. That's yes. a, a, a nice kind of innovation instead yes. of spinach, the way yes. the Italians do it, right? Okay. And the last is our beef kebab, accompanied with uh, brown rice mixed with mushrooms and bell peppers. And our grilled vegetables, our tatsiki, and our red sauce. Nice. So the rice is upland? Is from... It's from Tarlot. It's oh, organic as well. Great. That's interesting. Okay, shall we? Let's start with the salad. Actually, these Filipino... Yellow watermelons are really nice, no? They're very sweet. Mm -hmm. mm, very nice. I like the piquantness of the dressing. Let's try your fish taco. Mm. Nice contrast. And the tacos you make in-house as well? Yes. Very nice. And then I'm really, really curious to try your ravioli with the sweet potato tops. Mmm. I love the tomato sauce. Super tasty, the filling. So everything really from scratch. So let's try your kebab. How do you spice the, the meat? We actually marinate it for 24 hours mm -hmm. with cumin nice. and other spices. The flavors go from light refreshing to slightly tasty and then this is like hearty. really hearty. Yeah. And then of course it ends with this. Super delicious. I really like 
all the flavors and I'm super impressed that you guys do everything from scratch. You grow the blue pea outside and I'm sure the basil as well, right? It's from your back garden. Yes. So really nice, Chef. Thank, Thank you. you. Overall, what, what I'm taking home from Earth Kitchen is precisely because the food is done with beautiful indigenous Filipino products regardless of the cuisine. You can feel the grace that comes with the ingredients and of course with all the love that comes from the three chefs that put the dishes together. So, I need to leave room for the next place. I'm happy to be back at Hapag. This is a really, really great place with three young chefs doing amazing things with Filipino dishes, using beautiful Filipino ingredients and just creating a really nice vibe in the dining room. Hello guys! Hello, I'm so happy to be back. Chef Kevin, 30 and now. Let's share with them a little bit of your story. How did you guys start the Hapag and tell us what it's all about. So uh, 30 Nav and I, uh, we've been friends since we're 11 years old. That's so uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, after we graduated, uh, we parted ways. We went uh, to different countries. Uh, we studied and worked there. Then uh, 2017, uh, we went back here in the Philippines. Uh, we met in a party. Oh, wow! Yeah. <laughs> then uh, we talked about uh, how big the potential of Filipino cuisine is. So we started Hapag Private Dining. Then um, after six months of doing private dining, we made this commissary kitchen. So it was supposed to be just a commissary kitchen. But then uh, we decided to add at least 20 seats just for the oh. Filipinos to try our, what we try to do here. In, well, you know, it's a really wonderful dining room and you guys have been cooking up a storm and getting a lot, a lot of mileage. Yes. Everyone's like always excited to come and visit you and see what you're doing. Uh, Chef, actually, uh, here in Hapag, we can give you a tour. Great. Uh, Chef Nav will show you our Hapag. Hi, Chef. Uh, so, welcome to our dining room. I so, really so. love your dining room. Perfect. Wait a minute, and I noticed there's something new here. What a nice installation that yeah, is. Yeah, this one... Uh, it's a long story actually, so all the plants that had died, we just created them. You guys a, did it with the yeah, twigs. So yeah, super nice. Yeah, and I love the, the planting rice painting. Yeah, really, really actually. beautiful. Ah, fun story about this one. It's actually Kevin's uh, wife who made this. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah. nice. Exactly. You know, Chef Nav, I really love the way you guys interpret like classic, simple Filipino dishes. Yeah. So maybe you can, you know, tell us more about what inspires you guys. Um, actually, what really inspires us is just the culture itself. Okay, so basically, anything and everything we've eaten since we were kids. So I think it helped us uh, maybe improve and maybe help little dent we do in Filipino cuisine now. So we actually create our own ferments in the restaurant. So we oh, make wow. uh, misos and soy sauce with different kinds of beans. Okay. So you have all these little things growing there, huh? Yes, uh, it's very, very special in this area. Lalo na. Uh, I tend to smell it every day. So yeah. it develops over time. And well, you know, it's a great reflection actually of what's in our cuisine, right? Oh, I yes. mean, we always have a lot of fermented things yes. and we love sourness, yeah. right? I think and it's underrated. Yeah, right? so, so that's true. Lot, yeah. yeah, so I love your open kitchen. Tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about why uh, yeah, you prefer, uh, this, prefer it this way. Uh, I feel like uh, when people come to dine, it'll be great to actually see the whole kitchen. We keep no secrets here. Uh, everything we do should be seen by the guests. So I think it's yeah. very important that it's just open and very honest. Actually, my favorites when I dined with you were your kare kare and pares, which are the like two really homey Filipino yes. dishes, right? But uh, the way you guys prepared it, I mean, it was um, just food for the heart. So yeah, basically, uh, I feel like I don't want to steer too far from the classics. I yeah. see that in, in the way that yeah. three of you do your food. It's a really wonderful take on yeah. Filipino food. Oh, so I'm really you. excited to show them yeah, what you guys you. do. Yeah. Hi, Chef. Hi, so, Chef 30. Tell us a little bit about your bread service. Yeah, so this is our homemade bread. Um, we call it Pan de Kalinga uh, for the reason that um, the rice that we use here is uh, from Kalinga province. Okay. So that's black fermented black rice um, mixed into our sourdough bread. And this one is our house churned butter topped with Palawan honey. Nice. And beside it is the uh, fermented sweet potato halaya with oh. La Rosita cheese from Malagos Davao. And here, um, what Chef Nav and Kevin is doing is our uh, kinilaw na tuna sa pakwan. Yeah. So we kilaw the tuna in um, local citrus. We use dalandan, we use calamansi. And um, underneath is grilled um, watermelon with watermelon consomme 
and spring onion oil. For the next course, um, we'll bring you around the Philippines. Oh, cool! So, this is uh, our kambing Lusvininda. Okay. So, this is our take on the local goat, which we cook three ways. This one is inspired by the flavors of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Wow! So, let's start with Luzon. For Luzon, you have a kilawing kambing. So, that's grilled goat marinated in calamansi and spices. On top of it is a refreshing pandan and salada. We also added adobo aioli and we serve it in a crispy rice cracker. For Visayas, this one is inspired by Bacolod's Inasal. So underneath is a sourdough achuete tortilla with achara salsa. The kambing here is um, cooked in a salsa style, so we finish it on the grill. And on top of it is salsa verde using local greens. Okay, that's I have a soft spot for that because that's my area. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and beside it is a bracing liquid of the kambing. How so cool. you use it as a dipping sauce for the taco. And for Mindanao, you have a kambing sati pastil. Wow. So this one is inspired by Zamboanga sati and pastil from Cagayan de Oro. Yeah. So underneath is a, a malagkit rice, seasoned in local vinegar. We top it off with grilled goat, toasted coconut, pickled cucumber and the dipping sauce of coconut curry. Wow, super well thought out. All right, so uh, this dish is called the uh, Nihaw na Subpo. So this dish revolves around uh, fermentation. Okay, so we uh, do basically three kinds of fermentation here. So for the, the burro, we make it with black rice and then uh, green mangoes. Okay, so the glaze of the, the hipon or the shrimp is mungo miso. It takes about five months to make. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it takes a uh, labor of love. <laughs> so, okay, and then next we have uh, fermented pineapples and then fermented tomato jam. So both are jams. It goes well with the, the leaves. And then we have pickled papaya here. Okay, so basically it takes a while uh, to make this entire dish. So maybe uh, the pandemic helped us uh, make everything all together. Well, you know, it's a super interesting take on our burro with shrimp, right? Yes. So you kind of like took, it, took the ingredients apart and the fermented rice is... Uh, Still, the effect of the burro, but the shrimp is a beautiful grill. Yeah, the inihana supo is that beautiful prawn. So, I'm actually salivating now. So, it's time to try them. I'm really excited. Yeah, perfect. So, of course, let's start with some bread, right? Mm -hmm. You know, baking good bread is something really challenging for me, huh? I think you guys really kind of knocked it out of the park with this one. And I love the crust, so. Mmm. Delicious. You're taking me on a journey around mm -hmm. the Philippines, but I think partly it's also like a historical journey because we're starting with the kilaw. <laughs> mm. Wow. I love the watermelon. And the green oil is? Spring onion oil. Spring onion oil. Yum. Oh my gosh. Next, this is my tour of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Mm. I love the sour thing going on there. So let's do the soft taco. Oh my gosh. Mmm. <laughs> And finally, in the now, oh my gosh, one bite of everything. Mm -hmm. mm, yummy. Super and chaser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's really male. So here's our burro. Mm, I love burro. Mm. Mm. This is like a course in Philippine cuisine in one sitting. The creativity is just amazing, you guys. You, you really truly you. knocked Thank it out of the park. Hapag was a real amazing journey through our Philippine islands, not just geographically, through Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, but really seeing the history of our cuisine and how it has evolved into what it is today. I think that these three young chefs are really doing us proud, and what's great is that this sense of pride of young Filipino chefs today is really something that's quite heartwarming and it just shows what a great future Filipino cuisine has in the hands of the next generation.